automotive world where the Vogue is downsizing. Large displacement engines, especially those with over six cylinders, are quickly becoming phased out of production. It won't be long until we start to see our beloved V8 performance cars with small displacement forced induction engines, either combined with electric motors or just ditching the combustion altogether. The 2018 Audi S6 is the last S6 to get a V8 engine, probably ever. That means no more of this sound, unless you upgrade to the new RS6. But who knows how long that will have a V8 either. Hey, hello, people, what's going on? My dad and I flew down to Atlanta and picked up his new Audi S6. Audi Atlanta. Okay, so this Audi dealer is legit. It's a 2018 S6 with the four liter twin turbo V8. This is a car that hasn't always been in his financial reach. First car he ever owned was a hundred dollar Volkswagen Beetle that, you know, blew up on him the week he had it. And then it was an Audi Fox. And he's always kind of had these, these cars that had trade-offs. Cars that he had to personally sacrifice something to drive. But this being, Kind of his dream car. I'm incredibly glad that I could go down to Georgia and get it with him, because it means a lot to him. <sighs> Can you be brutally composed? Because if you could, this would be brutally composed. Calm, cool, collected, all of those sanguine adjectives. German V8 exhaust notes are like James Bond villains. They are cruel and punishing, yet deliberately sophisticated and serious German. I'm just trying to say a bunch of fancy words, really. So for those of you who are wondering why I have the back seats down as I'm testing this car, it's because the stock exhaust is not loud enough, and that's my way of kind of getting around it. That, if, uh, if you look it up, is actually one of the Ten Commandments that Moses received from God. Thou shall not block the exhaust note of a German V8, or any V8s for that matter, in parentheticals below. And then let me tell you, God is onto something. I ended up driving most of the 16 hour drive back from Atlanta to New Hampshire. And in that time period, I was able to get a really good feel for the car, the things I wasn't so crazy about. So in this video, I'm gonna discuss the car in general and my personal opinions on it. The first thing I wanna to touch upon is the one thing you can't help but notice when looking at this car, and that is the exterior color. I think this blue that the S6 is offered in is one of the most beautiful colors you can get, you know, with the exception of aftermarket wraps and stuff like that. It doesn't quite sparkle, but it has just this wonderful tone and shine to it. And you also get these really cool metallic, almost aluminum looking trim pieces on the car. It adds a little bit of contrast and, and pop to the overall look. The new 2020 S6s are gorgeous cars, don't get me wrong. But there's something about the C7, the C7.5, which is this one here, uh, post facelift. To me, it's just kind of timeless. It's kind of like how I like the uh, the S197 Mustang over the S550 Mustang. A lot of automakers, I think nowadays, are adding too many unnecessary lines to their designs. And I think it just looks a little, it looks a little too try hard. And I think one of the biggest draws to this model S6 here is the fact that to most people, you can drive around unnoticed in this car. But to those who are into car culture and the subculture of Audis, know that this car is a little more than just some mundane sedan. This same basic engine here is the same engine in the S7, the RS6, the RS7. The main difference between the engine in this car and the engine in the RS7 or RS6 is a different turbo setup than that, allowing those models to make more boost, therefore more power. I'm not really pushing this car on the turns here. But these cars allegedly do have a good amount of understeer, as with most Audis. Going through the corners, you can feel that weight transfer a little bit. 
<laughs> I love that. And uh, this car hides its weight very well. Kind of like Oprah Winfrey. The exterior color is clearly beautiful in its own right, but when combined with this ivory interior, although prone to getting dirty, makes for a stunningly beautiful and classic color combo. The second thing I noticed about this car, and I didn't think it'd be this obvious, but it's the quality of its manufacturing. At a glance, every panel seems perfectly aligned. The design and layout of the dash is gorgeous. And you have this kind of sweeping panoramic line that's actually a functional vent that blows air at your face. And it's really cool how they incorporated that functionality into the actual design of the car. And it's not just the quality of the assembly, it's the quality of all the materials used in the assembly. You have real carbon fiber trim here. They don't throw the whole S6 badge thing in your face too much either. They have just enough badging in here to remind you that you're driving the higher performance model of the A6. You got one in the gauge cluster, one on the steering wheel, two on the headrests, and a couple on the front brake calipers, one on the front fascia, and then one on the trunk in the back. So they didn't overdo it with the badging, just subtle enough to go unnoticed, but just present enough to excite the enthusiasts who take notice. The third thing that I'm really impressed with are these seats. I've been in a few sporty styled seats before, and so far these are my favorite. The leather has a nice texture to it. It's not incredibly soft, but the quilted nature of it is, is fantastic. And the comfortable seats aren't just in the front either. If you sit in the back, those seats are, are kind of bolstered too, which is really cool. You don't see that too often in sedans like this, five-seater sedans. And I'm about to compare this car with uh, my father's Lexus ES300H. And I know these cars are in two different price ranges, but they're comparable in size. So this car has a much more comfortable back seat than my father's Lexus, which he's going to sell, by the way. The headroom back here is better than the Lexus, and the quality of the materials used in the back seat here, they're the same quality materials that are used in the front seat here. All right, now, for the driving dynamics of this car. Obviously, this is one of the better sounding engines I've driven. The power builds very linearly for a turbocharged engine. A lot of torque down low, and you also get that torque throughout most of the RPM range. Throttle response isn't incredible in automatic mode, but once you uh, start shifting with the paddle shifters, it becomes incredibly responsive. Come on, what are you doing? Go, girl, say, can you see? All right, so my dad just hopped in the back seat and he's gonna assist us in the zero to 60 run here. I actually have launch mode from the factory. You can actually look up how to do it in the owner's manual, which means it's warranted. But it, it has kind of a trip computer when it comes to launch mode. It only lets you launch the car 200 times with the stock ECU tune. And this is how you put it into launch control. Use the Audi Drive Select to set the setting into dynamic. Turn the electronic stability control off. So you have to press and hold the button for five seconds. And now to set it into launch control, you have to put the drive shift lever over into sport. So then you have to mash the brake pedal and then press in the throttle and it should hold the RPM up around 5,000. And then you release the brake, that's launch control. And all right, hit record. It was holding it at 2,000 RPM, which is weird. All right, that's what we got so far, though. That's good. To be completely fair, 4.5 seconds is really good for what we're working with here because we have summer tires on right now, and it's 29 degrees out, and there's a little bit of salt on the road, so not bad. Everyone in the parking lot is looking at me. And I'm six feet tall. My feet are flush against the back of the trunk and my head is grazing this seat here. So unscientifically, six feet of room when you fold the seats down. Now I'm gonna get out of here before people call the cops. The car is incredibly stable at high speeds, very quiet too, very insulated. Uh, which can be a good and a bad thing, depends how you look at it. But most people buying an expensive German car want something a little bit more refined, but also very quick. Okay, so I'll do a couple things I'm not too crazy about with the S6. We're gonna jump back to the power plant of this car. The engine sounds fantastic. It has a very 
German tone, if you know what I mean. This sounds kind of restrained and held back in a way. Uh, that has a lot to do with the exhaust on here. It's just way too quiet for this car. It's quiet, it's too quiet, and I have the back seats folded down. So that has to be addressed, in my opinion. Um, we'll see what my father thinks. This thing just gets up and goes, though, that's for sure. I haven't found it so far, but to my knowledge, there's no way to keep the active exhaust valves open all the time. Uh, I'm in dynamic mode and sport mode, manually shifting, and it still doesn't open the exhaust valves until I really... Get... And you can hear the change in the exhaust tone, like closed, closed, open. Closed, closed, open. You know, I just, I wish there was a way to keep it open all the time because it's just too darn quiet at low RPM. That brings me to another thing I'm not too crazy about, the fun factor of this car. Very fun to drive, don't get me wrong. But for a fifth of this price used, you could buy a very commendable Volkswagen GTI with a manual transmission that is debatably more fun to drive than this. Because the Audi engineers are trying to make this as sophisticated feeling as possible, it does end up coming off a bit numb, if you will. I do feel like that an aftermarket exhaust would help fix this a little bit. And also when the weather warms up, we can roll the windows down, you know, hear a little bit more of that road noise, hear a little bit more of that exhaust, and um, kind of just up that driver involvement a little bit. I just want to give you my opinion on the overall feeling that I get from this car, which is definitely a positive one. One other thing that I'm not a huge fan of is the stock tune that comes with this car. This engine is so incredibly underrated when it comes to power. One, kind of because of the turbos that it has, but mostly because Audi does this to try and kind of upsell their RS line. What would be the motivation to buy an RS over an S if the power figures are pretty similar? But it's not just Audi that does this. A lot of manufacturers do this as well. Another thing that I love is the ambient lighting in this car. There's recessed lighting in the doors, in the footwells, and you get the Audi emblem projected on the ground with LEDs when you open the front doors. The attention to detail is what makes Audi so special. Okay, so if you made it with me this far, I really appreciate you watching, and I'm incredibly excited for my father to have one of his dream cars, and uh, quite frankly, one of my dream cars as well. Look forward to seeing what the reliability of this car is like in the future. Maybe use some modifications like exhaust, tune, cold air intake. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. Maybe consider checking out some of my other videos. This one is a little bit more serious because of the nature of the vehicle. It's very German and very serious. Horrible, horrible German accent. And maybe consider checking out this video here that YouTube thinks you'll like. And uh, on that note, das Auto. You have a lot of cars in here. Oh.